your grace, the clergy, members of our congregation here present, and those who are following us on the virtual on television, we welcome you to this service today. Today we celebrate the feast of Christ the King, and His grace will be reflecting with us on faithfulness in ministry and leadership as we celebrate the life of Reverend Manja and his family for the last 31 years of service in the church. Just remind you, those who are here present, that we should wear our masks properly at all times, wash our hands with soap and water before and after the service. Let's continue to keep the distance as it is required. Avoid physical contact with anyone sharing of materials and conversing during the service. Kindly follow the set movement paths as guided by the ushers. Kindly use the washrooms on the ground floor of the Trinity Center. We shall continue to give our offerings through the pay bill numbers that will be provided. Cash and checks are encouraged to be deposited directly into our accounts. Please do not visit other places after the service uh, so that we can keep the cathedral safe. In case you feel unwell, there is a tent outside there, but also there are ashes here who can help. The Lord be with you. Today is the Sunday next before Advent, Sunday and the last Sunday in the liturgical year, when we celebrate the Feast of Christ the King. On this day, we celebrate Christ's messianic kingship and sovereign rule over all creation and remind us of God's will is to restore all things in his well-beloved Son, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We pray that God will mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule of our Lord Jesus Christ, the King. Let us sing together.
Brothers and sisters, we have come together, the people of God, drawn by his spirit, longing for his word, to praise the holy name of the Lord, to share his glorious news of grace, to pray for our needs and the pains of the world, to rejoice in his love, and to be sent in his peace. We are heirs of the Father. Renewed in the Spirit. If we say this morning that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins in repentance and trust, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins. So let us sit down and confess our sins to the Almighty God. Together, eternal Father, God of our ancestors, before your power all things tremble. But through your Son we approach your throne. We have done wrong and neglected to do right. Our sins weigh heavily on our hearts. Lord, have mercy. Count them not against us. Grant us the joy of forgiveness. And lighten our hearts with the glory of Christ, who died and rose again for us. Amen. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ rejoices at repentance and declares his acceptance. The dead are alive. The lost are found. His goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life, and you live in the house of the Lord forever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on other cities in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And in that day, there shall be a root of Jesse, who shall stand as a banner of the people. For the Gentiles will seek him, and his resting place be glorious. Let us together join in saying the collect for the Sunday next before Advent. Eternal Father, whose Son Jesus Christ ascended to the throne of heaven, that he might rule over all things as Lord and King. Keep the church in the unity of the Spirit, in the bond of peace, and bring the whole created order to worship at his feet, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, open our lips. Let us praise the Lord. Because of our faith that we have in Jesus Christ, we stand now to join Christians throughout the centuries and through the world today as we affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth.
Amen. I believe you're all happy to be here this morning, you right? God is good. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. And that is his nature. Amen. This morning we just want to lift his name high. For he has been good to us. No matter what we've gone through, he remains God. And he tells you, son, daughter, I am still your God. Amen. Let's put our hands together. This morning we just want to say thank you. There is nothing God that we can give you. Everything is yours. Let us just offer a sacrifice of praise to you this morning. He's done so much for me. I cannot tell it all.
Nilitani sita umoka. Ni yako? Hii nduti ni yangu. Hey. Niliwai pale quick beat. Quick beat? Eh, hey, quick beat imekucha kusaitia wanainji kama sisi. Yes. Niliinunua 399 shillings. Chu nilikuwa the lowest unique beater. 399 shillings. Eh, hey, quick beat shilingi mocha uneza nunua. Ah, uh-huh. Shilingi mbili uneza nunua micro. Hey. Shilingi tano uneza nunua hata gari. Shutu pereke huko. Ah, ah, mutu wa enti huko. Jiunga na quick beat ni raisi. Enda kwenye M-Pesa, bonyeza paybill, kisha weka business number 4032353. Kwenye account, weka kodi bidha unayotaka. Na bidi yako ya chini zaidi. Kwa mfano, TV16. Kisha weka shilingi shirini tu kama iradi yako. Weka bidi yako pia kwenye www.quickbeat.co.ke. Kumbuka, bidi ya chini zaidi ya kipeke, ndiyo ununua. Quick beat, bidha abora kwa bidi ya chini. My son is 16 years and um, one of the interesting bits is uh, he's a twin, meaning his twin brother is neurotypical and he is on the autism spectrum. Senzi wa minisaitia kwa sababu kira mara wana tuambia senzi tunayasaendelea ukaa nao na tunawasaitia aje ili wasiwache iyo posi ya nyuwame fanya kwa sababu watoto wale mafu kusahau ni rais anaweza onyeshwa na akikaa muda kidogo anasahau wiki hii kwenye mkulima tutazuru eneo la kitengela na kuangazia ukuzi wa tomato na kitunguu kuna nyanya zinasukonga inachukua 75 days to 90 days depending on the variety na vile climate iko. Ngombe tunakamua mara mbili kwa siku uh, saa hii masaa ya saa tisa na saa kumi na moja asubuhi. Uh, utapata wale ngombe for example kuna wale wanatoa vita 15 kwa siku ama 20. Jiunge nasi Jumapili saa tisa nusu hapo KBC Channel 1 kwa ukweli wa mambo. He will let a woman mistreat you because he's dating her. He will not defend you. Your mom was also relatively quite busy doing doing life. She was busy with her husband fighting him or other women. So many men, male relatives in their house at a time they raped you several times or it went on for for a long time it or went what on happened? for so many years i can't forget what it smelled like there is yeah. help out there you don't have to live in this pain on your own mm. get the support that you need from the abundance of your store to flow into the lives of your people. You say in your word that the cattle on a thousand hill belong to you. And so you are the God of all provision. As you do this, we shall be careful to celebrate you. In this situation of need and lack, we pray, Father, that you encourage those who have, those who have been blessed, who have something extra, to learn to share with those who are in need. We pray, Father, for those who are unwell, who are going through various forms of illnesses, either at home, in the hospitals, or in whatever situation, that, God, you stretch forth your hand of healing upon them. 
We pray for those known to us, those names that come to mind now. Lord, we lift them to you and pray that you minister your healing upon them. You are the healing balm of Gilead. May you minister healing to anyone in this congregation and under the sound of our voice that they may be well. We speak restoration and complete healing in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We claim the promise of your word that by the stripes of Jesus Christ we are healed. And so we give you thanks and praise for you are fulfilling that. We ask of you that you encourage, dear Lord, those who are bereaved during this season. We pray, Father, for uh, the family of our member, Dr. Anthony Were, who had to exit this life not under very good circumstances. We pray for his family, that you encourage them during this time of grief and mourning, the passing on of a pillar in their family. And as you remember the family of Dr. Were, we pray for the many other families that have lost their loved ones who are struggling, God, to come to terms with their losses. Would you comfort them? Would you surround them like the mother chick covers her small chicks? May they know your comfort and may they know your hand of victory. And so we give you thanks and praise, Lord, and pray for every one of us that you may stretch forth your hand of protection over us against the evil intents of the enemy. We pray for the general membership of this nation that you preserve us from the deadly coronavirus that is surging in this spike of second wave. We ask of you, Father, that you stir up the conscience of the citizens of this nation to be aware and to be compliant with the regulations. We also pray that you keep everyone safe, dear Lord, especially the vulnerable, those who are susceptible, Lord. We ask of you that you strengthen their immune systems, that you keep them safe during this time. But also keep us safe from all dangers that the enemy would plot against us. So receive all the glory, Jehovah. Receive all the honor. For you have purposed to be our God. Exalt your name in our midst and cause us to be vindicated, knowing that we have a Father in you. This is our prayer in the most powerful and unchanging name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The first reading is taken from the book of Joshua chapter 14, beginning to read at verse 6. Joshua chapter 14, beginning to read at verse 6. Now the men of Judah approached Joshua at Gilgal, and Caleb, son of Jephani, the Canaanite, said to him, You know what the Lord said to Moses, the man of God at Kadesh Barnea, about you and me. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to explore the land. And I brought him back a report according to my convictions, but my fellow Israelites who went up with me made the hearts of the people melt in fear. I, however, followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. So on that day, Moses swore to me, the land on which your feet have walked will be your inheritance and that of your children forever, because you have followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. Now then, just as the Lord promised, he has kept me alive for 45 years since the time he said this to Moses, while Israel moved about in the wilderness. So here I am today, 85 years old. I am still as strong today as the day Moses sent me out. I'm just as vigorous to go out to battle now as I was then. Now give me this hill country that the Lord promised me that day. You yourself heard then that the Anakites were there and their cities were large and fortified. But the Lord helping me, I will drive them out just as he said. 
Then Joshua blessed Caleb, son of Jephani, and gave him Hebron as his inheritance. So Hebron has belonged to Caleb, son of Jephani, the Kenizzite, ever since, because he followed the Lord, the God of Israel, wholeheartedly. This is the word of the Lord. I would like to invite a team that has come all the way from Tanzania, they are friends to the Manjis family, kindly come here, perform only one number. I know we will be able to enjoy most of your music when we go to the uh, auditorium after the service. On Tanzania, Mkowapi, Mpo? Wimbo Mmoja. Ninguni kwa keba Kuramaka omengi Nia mesha kandariwa Kwa jiri yetu sote Dugu tuji anda Japo dhiki ni nyingi Matusu haya ishi Lakini tutafika Ninguni kwa keba Kuramaka omengi Nia mesha kandariwa Tuji anda Japo dhiki ni nyingi Mata so haya ishi Lakini tutafika reading is taken from the gospel as recorded by St. Matthew, chapter 25, beginning to read at verse 14. Matthew, chapter 25, beginning to read at verse 14. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. Again, it will come like a man on a journey who called his servants and entrusted him his property to them, to one he gave five talents of money, to another two talents, and to another one talent, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received the five talents went at once and put his money to work and gained five more. So also the one with the two talents gained two more. But the man who had received the one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of the servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five talents brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five talents. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, 
Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man with the two talents also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two talents. See, I have gained two, two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the one who had received one talent came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your talent in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gathered where I have not scattered seed. Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I return, I would have received it back with interest. Take the talent from him and give it to the one who has 10 talents. For everyone who has will be given more and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him and thrown and throw that worthless servant into the darkness where there will be weeping and garnishing of teeth. When the Son of Man comes, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne in the heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on the right and the goats on the left. And the king will say to those on the right, come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that you have brought us today to celebrate this day, which is celebrate you as King of the universe and all that is created. We also want to thank you that we celebrate servanthood and the way you call us to leadership and to exercise the talents and the gifts you have given us 
in the course of our duty. So, Lord, speak to us your word, the word of life. Speak to our minds and our hearts that we may hear, understand you, and take heed of your word. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Please let us be seated. I take this opportunity once again to thank God for bringing us together in the cathedral to worship him as we also come to celebrate the life and the time and ministry of our brother Reverend Manje and family. And I want to take this opportunity to greet you who have come from near and far from our diocese and our own diocese and across the borders and denominations in the name of our Lord and Savior, good morning. I think it's a rather afternoon, good afternoon. Praise the Lord. We also want to welcome the team from Tanzania and thank you for that beautiful piece. We are looking forward for more. Uh, I have not seen a sister, maybe they are uh, in the entourage, but we will wish to see also them singing but that team of young men sang very nicely, welcome, and welcome all of us. Today indeed is a, a day God has given us to come and celebrate Christ the King uh, of the universe. And the readings, particularly the New Testament reading, Matthew chapter 25, the parable speak of Jesus the King, although he brought it in a parable setup, uh, speaking of human uh, leadership, and uh, this master who have left to a far country, but indeed he was speaking about the kingdom and himself as a king who gives talents and will come again expecting the use of those talents. And today we shall be speaking about that uh, in reference to also the ministry of Reverend Manje and our ministry, all of us who feel called into the, the, the ministry of Jesus Christ. The call to service, and serving God is the greatest call that anyone would ever receive in life. Serving God brings immense joy and fulfillment in life. When we invest our minds and time and resources in the kingdom, they never go to waste. It is indeed the investment, the parable of the talents, uh, as we have read in Matthew 25, 14 to 30, has just told us that the giver of talents, the Lord himself, expect those talents to be used uh, according to the measure and abilities he has given to those he has given uh, the talents. The parable is a literary form in the Bible. And they are normally, generally, uh, most parables uh, are speaking about the kingdom in human terms, using human stories, so that we may understand and uh, take heed and believe in it and trust in it. To summarize the parable of the talent about a rich ruler who lives for another, uh, an extended period and bestows some of his money upon his servants. He gives each servant a different sum according to the ability he has assessed uh, each one of them to possess. One receiving five talents, another received two, and another received one. When the ruler returned, he finds the first servant double his five talents to ten, and the second servant double his two talents to four, and the third servant did not do anything about the talent given. He only brought back that which was given to him by the master without any profit, or any addition to the talent. We learn a few lessons from this portion of scripture. One of the lessons we learn is that uh, talents are given by God to us according to the measure and ability, expecting us to use the talents he has given for his own purposes and glory. He does not give us equal talents, he gives talents which he know will be used. Equally, he does not expect the same amount of money or returns from the talents because he knows the capacities that uh, he has given 
for each talent. And when we listen to the story, the return of the talents, even the one with the two only added to make it four, had the same praise with the one with, with the five who made it ten. So ten in this measure did not supersede four because the amount of work put into it was equal. So the master did not also expect the one with the one talent to bring ten or even to bring four. Maybe he expected him to bring two because that was a measure given to him. So God gives resources to those whom he calls so that those resources are used for his kingdom. I want us to dissect some of these resources God gives. There are what we can call heart resources, there are also mind resources, and there are physical, tangible resources. In this case, the resources displayed here are more of tangible, physical resources in form of money. But the driving factor for these resources to be utilized and used must call to range or to action heart resources and mind resources. So which are these heart resources I am talking about? The heart resources include faith, include trust, include vision, include the power, willpower, and courage. All these resources emanate from the heart. It is the resources that uh, comes only from the heart. The willpower, the courage, the faith, the trust, the wisdom to make the judgment, all are heart resources which must come into play whenever other resources are given. And if we don't utilize the heart resources, then it will be waste to think of utilizing other resources. If you go to uh, the first reading, the story of Caleb as explained in Joshua. This was many years after Caleb and the spies were sent into Palestine to spy. When they came back, the rest saw fear, the rest saw nothing in the land other than a land that devours its people and those who live in it and kill and consume them. But Caleb and Joshua saw something different from the heart. They saw there is faith in God. They trusted in that God. They had the willpower and the courage and they told the congregation of Israel, let us go at once and occupy the land for we are more than able to do it. The rest then melted and melted the hearts of people. But now, many years, 45 years later, when the land was being subdivided, Caleb reminded Joshua, and you know they were the only two, that you remember that day that God promised that I'm going to be given this hill, and uh, he requested that the hill be, required, be given to him because of the courage he had, the heart resource he had, which translated into uh, a marching into the promised land. There are also mind resources. The mind resources include knowledge, skills, and ideas, and imaginations. If uh, these people who are given the five talents were able to employ the heart and the mind resources, then the actualization of the use of the talents will be realized. And I think the first to utilize the heart and the mind resources to be able to put these resources into use and add them to the number. So friends, brothers and sisters, when God gives us resources, he does not only give the physical tangible which we hype and make the main thing. No, today the, the world is about how much money we are making about, what we can create with money about, what we can do um, with, with, that, with that money. And people are saying, is all what money can do is all, all there is. But without the heart and the mind resources, money can be as useless as it was in the hands of the one who was given one talent. So what was the response of this man with the one talent? He did not want to use the heart resource, so he had no courage. 
And that's why he said, I know you are a hard man. You reap where you did not sow. So I feared you. I hid your, your, your talent until you come. I had no courage to use it. He lacked wisdom. He lacked faith and trust that is going to use it. He lacked the willpower. And when those were lacking in him, what also followed was there was no knowledge of how to use the talent. The skills were not displayed. No creativity, no innovation, no ideas displayed in the heart and the mind of this man. No imagination. His only imagination was guided by fear, and that I have to bring your talent as it was, and here it is. The next thing we learn is that uh, we must remember that we are accountable before God when God gives us resources. So the Bible speaks that the owner of the talents will one day come and demand accountability, and these people showed how they were accountable to it. When the heart and the mind resources are at play, it produces what is called, in today's language, positive thinking. And positive thinking produces positive energy. And positive energy produces success. The two men had positive thinking, which produced energy, positive energy, and it produced success in their work because they employed the heart energy, the heart resources of our courage, faith, trust, vision, willpower, and wisdom, which produced skills, knowledge, imagination, and ideas that created the talents to be increased to the measure they gave to the owner of the talents. Negative energy, or negative thinking produces negative energy, which results in failure. The third man entertains in his mind negative energy, which produces negative, uh, negative thinking that produces negative energy, and that negative energy is what you see displayed in the story. I know you are a hard man. I did not want to tamper with your talent. Here it is, have it, and there was no increase. It was failure. He was snatched, the one, and given to the one who had used those talents. The last point I'm making is that uh, God's reward faithful, faithfulness and fruitfulness in ministry. Reverend Manji has served us for the last 31 years, 31 years as a clergy in uh, this diocese and when we were in the diocese of Nairobi before the creation of All Saints Cathedral. He has served in many parishes. Today, he is going to retire in active service as one who has served in various parishes. The test of each one of us is which resources have we been using? Have we tried our own or have we tried God's resources which emanate from the heart and enter the mind and into action producing positive thinking that produce positive energy which lead to success? We are celebrating him because he has trusted in God. He, has, he had, had faith in God. That is what made him serve for the last 35, uh, 31 years. He had the positive willpower and the courage. That is why he was able to serve his full time until retirement. Brother, there is reward in faithfulness. God reward us according to his measure. God expects us to be faithful with the talent he has given each one of us. We must put them to work and service. Faithfulness means using what God has given us according to the plan he has prescribed to us for his glory and for his honor. We must never use our talents and abilities for personal gratification, but for God's glory. You know, some of us, people look at church ministers and they think they chose the wrong profession because uh, there is no additional or there is no many opportunities in serving God. But let me tell you, our opportunities are immense, not in monetary terms, not in big things utterly, but God will always reward us with many other things, good health, ability to use the heart resources and the mind resources for always positive thinking and positive energy that guarantees success wherever we shall go. 
He will never abandon his own, and neither are you, Reverend Manje, abandoned by God. Even in your retirement, he will continue to watch over you and be your, your, your guardian. The person who diligently invests in his or her time and talents to serve God will be rewarded. The one who has no heart and fails to use his or her abilities in the kingdom of God will be punished. I encourage us to consider making good use of our time, the talents, the treasures that God has put in our hearts and that which he has put in our minds and the ones that he has put in our hands as physical resources. For he has many and much more heart resources, mind resources, and also that which has placed in our hands. The greatest measure of faithfulness is a total surrender to the Lordship of Christ. It is to fully offer ourselves as living sacrifices to God, as Paul says in Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Joshua 14, where we have read verse 14, Caleb is rewarded for his faithfulness even 45 years later down the line. No matter how long it takes, God rewards everything and every act of faithfulness. He rewards his leaders who serve him diligently and faithfully. Faithfulness is not to be measured in magnitude or size. It is in the right use. You know, those guys with five talents and four talents, they were not measured because of the size of the talents they produced. It is because of the right use they put into it. So that even the one who produced two more is equally praised as the one who produced five more because the talents were more. The outcomes are not to be measured only in, quality, in quantity, but more in quality. This is where many of us normally miss the mark, that the things of God are not only to be measured by quantity, they are to be measured by the quality. What is the quality of the service? That's why even the one with less who still use it, the praise is the same. This is where the quality of one can even surpass the value of the quantity of 10. It has capacity to surpass. For me to illustrate this, we all know the athlete uh, competitions, either the Olympics or the World Games and others. Normally a country that has uh, the largest tally of uh, the medals uh, win, but not the numbers that are in the table that win, it is the number of the most valued uh, of uh, the medals. So a country with two gold medals and only three bronzes and one uh, silver will still be ahead of a country with the 10 silvers and the 50 bronze. Put together over 70 or 100, the country with two gold will still be in front. What do I mean? When we use the talents God has given us to his glory, God measures the quality of our service. What is produced in us is not by quantity, but by the quality of our service. And as I end, let me illustrate with a short story. An elderly preacher was rebuked by one of his deacons one Sunday morning before the service began. And the man said, Pastor, something must be wrong with your preaching and your work. There, there is there has been only one person added to the church in a whole year, and it's just a boy. You know, this pastor preached the whole year, and it's only one boy who turned to Christ. The minister listened, his eyes moisturized, with, <clears throat> and his thin hand trembling. I feel it all, he says. He replied, but God knows I have tried to do my duty one day, the minister's heart was heavy as he stood before his flock. As he finished the message, he felt a strong inclination to resign. After everyone else has left, the one boy came to him and asked, Do you think I will work hard for my education and I will become a preacher, perhaps a missionary one day? Again, tears welled up 
in the minister's eyes. Aha, these hills, the ache I feel, the minister said. Robert, I see the divine hand now. May God bless you, my boy. Yes, I think you will become a preacher. Many years later, an aged missionary returned to London from Africa. His name was spoken with reference. Nobles invited him to their homes. He had added many souls to the Church of Jesus Christ, reaching even some of Africa's most savage chiefs. His name was Robert Moffat, the same Robert who years before had spoken to the pastor on a Sunday morning in the old Scottish kirk. Lord, help us to be faithful, then give us the grace and the courage to leave the results to you. This story is from an unknown source, but it tells us a story. It is not the numbers. The only one boy that turned to Christ, who one member of the congregation rebuked the pastor for not working so hard, turned out to be a great missionary of all times who led many souls to God. When you only produce an extra more with the talents God has given you, the Lord will multiply. And may he, in his name, be praised now and into the future. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we give thanks to the Reverend Manje and the strong supporting ministry of his family. For the last 31 years, he has served God's people as a clergy in the Anglican Church of Kenya.
It has been a great privilege to serve the church. And by the grace God has given me, I trust I laid the foundation as a vice builder. And now someone else will continue the construction. Each one should build with care. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. But that is he not unjust. He will not forget your work. And the Lord have shown him as you serve his people. As I live, I exhort you to continue as a loving community of God, which joyfully shares the good news of our Savior Jesus Christ. I pray that those touched by your ministry would be drawn to a fuller life in Christ and deeper relationship with the community. I pray that you continue to grow in love for each other and in love for our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we give thanks for the ministry of the Reverend Cyrus Manje, who is retiring today. We have shared ministry together as servants and shepherds among the people granted to us by God. Those that wait upon the Lord have their strength renewed. They rise up with wings as eagles. They walk and do not grow weary. They run and not grow faint. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for calling this your servant Cyrus to serve you as a priest for that one year in your vineyard. We thank you for taking him safely through dangers, toils, and snares of this fleeting life. Your grace has brought him this far to his retirement from, fu from full-time ministry. Grant him grace that his life may safely be secured in you through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Lord, thank as you. we thank you for these members of your servant's family we have, who have supported him during his years of active ministry, may you refresh and renew them from the abundance of your provisions so that they will not be lacking in anything. For in, your, in you dwells all riches. Strengthen the bond of love among them and position them for more impact in the midst of all among whom they will find themselves in Jesus' name. And now may God bless and guide you on the next steps of your journey. May the Lord look, look upon you with favor and scatter darkness from before your path. May he bless your going out and your coming in from this day and forevermore. Amen. May God bless you and enrich your ministry now and all the days of your lives. Asante Nisana. Thank you, Your Grace. Yes, we can celebrate the Reverend Manje and his family. After the service, we will gather at the auditorium for a luncheon where we'll be able to say more and Reverend Manje will be able to speak to us um, on his experience for the last 31 years. It is now time for the offerings and we continue to thank the cathedral members, those here present, and those watching us virtually for your generosity always to the work of God. I request that the pay bills be uh, projected. And for those who would like to give virtually away from the cathedral, the pay bill numbers for the offertory, for the tithes, for the organ restoration and thanksgiving, kindly use the 30, 30, 36. And for the project that now continues, kindly use the 30, 30, 35 as the choir ministers to us while seated.
Allow me to take a very short moment to bring you the notices. First is to publish the bans of marriage between the following persons. For the second time of announcing, we publish the bans of marriage between Samson Maine Kamau of Christ Supreme Church and Agnes Wanjiko Jorogi of All Saints, Dennis Momesu Osoro of Pwani PAG Church Buxton, and Lillian Millicent Wendera of All Saints. For the first time of announcing, we publish the bans of marriage between Martin Gatti Ndeti of AIC Ngongrod and Leonida Achieng Kombo of All Saints Cathedral. Nathan Muema Musioko or, and Joyce Ndue Muma, both of Calvary Worship Center in Nairobi. Bernard Enos Wanekea and Masi Kemigisha Bwesije, both of All Saints Cathedral. Samuel Anthony O'Quiri of St. Philip's Masita Bondo and Gladys Petronila Akinyi by of St. Francis Carroll. Lastly, Kevin Omondi Odondi and Joyce Owino Ocheng, both of All Saints Cathedral, Nairobi. If any one of you has any impediment why this person should not be joined together in holy matrimony, you are required to write to us officially. We will be having a virtual baptism class starting yesterday, and if you have not registered, kindly do that quickly so that you can be included. Go to our website and you will get the details there. The Special Abilities Ministry is appealing for donations of new and used uh, wheelchairs of, uh, or any other devices. Kindly deliver them uh, to the cathedral. And today we will be handing over one wheelchair that a member donated to one member who needs that service. The Wednesday Congregation of Prayers are still going on at 5.15 to 7 p.m. Kindly come for a physical service here in the cathedral, a service just for prayer. Our halls are open for hiring. You can get in touch with us at info at allsaintsnairobi.org. Whether you are a member or non-member, they are now available for use here in the cathedral and will provide you more information. There are many services that are coming up between the Advent and Christmas. Kindly look at the service sheets that have been sent online so that you can be able to um, participate accordingly. Allow me to tell you about next Sunday. Next Sunday will be our Advent Sunday, which marks the beginning of the Advent season as we look ahead to the coming of Jesus, Jesus at Christmas and his second coming. As well as our usual services next week, we shall have a candlelit Advent carol service at 6 p.m., both live and online. Please join us, either physically or virtually. It is one of the highlights of our musical year here at the cathedral. This year, the online service will even feature a special international virtual choir piece where we join together with singers around the world. Since the day is particularly musical, and it's also the day of Thanksgiving as we end the month of Thanksgiving, we will request that Christians be prepared with special donations towards the restoration of the organ. We will update you on how far we've come on the journey of restoration, and please consider putting monies aside which we can give generously towards restoration of this musical piece that brings the uniqueness of worship in the cathedral. Your Grace, allow me now to call James, 
James has worshipped in the cathedral for many years. And a member of this cathedral, when we appealed for a wheelchair, brought this one, and this is a special wheelchair that can be used by James. And so kindly, James, if you can be wheeled here, you can receive this gift, and I'll pray for you. If you can help uh, in uh, transferring James officially to his wheelchair, this one he'll take home with him. It is a special gift from a member for your use. Let's continue to be generous to the church so that the church can reach out to people like James who need help and that they can know the image of God through our generosity. Let us celebrate God's faithfulness in the life of James. God, our Heavenly Father, you answer our prayers through the generosity of your people. Thank you for the cry that James has heard to have a wheelchair. And through the member who donated this, Lord, we thank you that James will be able to move up and about without any hindrance. We ask that you continue to bless James, that he, he will not be in need at all, that through us he will receive your blessings. Thank you for the member. Would you bless them and bless them with members of their family and keep them under your care and help us, Lord, to be generous so that your people can receive your blessing. We ask of your blessing upon James and upon the donor in the name of God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, James, and always welcome to the All Saints Cathedral. You are part of this big family. After the recessional hymn, please remain seated and wait for the ashes to direct you. Leave the compound within the shortest time so that we don't mingle. However, uh, we will have the luncheon at Reverend Man for Reverend Manje at the auditorium, and I know he has welcomed us. If you would like to give towards uh, his retirement, feel free to ask, and we'll be able to provide you with the necessary details for your donations. But even if you give directly towards the cathedral through the pay bill number and just write Reverend Manje, we will transfer that matter, ma money directly to him. Uh, let us now stand for his grace to give us the benediction. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Faint Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord. Rejoice in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Be among you and remain with you always. Amen.